What would we do if we could not communicate on the telephone? The phone is an important part of our lives and keeping in touch for those with hearing or speech difficulties can be a challenge. We're going to tell you about some remarkable telephone services that can help those with physical challenges stay in touch. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome to The Better Part, a program by and for seniors and devoted to exploring the many facets of those better years of our lives. The name of our program is inspired by a quotation from Robert Browning. Grow old along with me, the best is yet to be, the last of life for which the first was made. Hello, I'm Valerie Jeffrey, your host for this edition of The Better Part. Our telephone is an important part of our life. It's our connection to family and friends. It's a necessity in the workplace. It helps supply our social needs, but can also be a vital life-saving connection when we're sick or injured. So, how do you communicate over the phone if you have a speech or hearing difficulty, or both? Thanks to the California Telephone Access Program, CTAP, you can regain your independence and communicate more easily with others. Frances Franco is our guest, and she's been Outreach Specialist with CTAP for the past four years. She's worked with issues concerning disabled adults for over 20 years. Welcome back to The Better Part, Frances. Pleasure to be here once again. You were here previously to tell us about the equipment available from CTAP. And now you're back to tell us about the special phone services offered? That's correct. Um, that is the, um, one of the um, programs administered by our organization, and that's called the Relay Service. What kinds of physical limitations can the California Relay Service accommodate? Well, it can truly accommodate quite a number of challenges, as you said. The predominant is um, for individuals who may have very profound hearing loss and who use a special type of a telephone known as the TTY. And the TTY actually is also gaining popularity with individuals who also may have, have some speech impairments. And there are two types of TTY as you have here. That's correct. So the, the standard one, um, and probably a lot of, m most of your viewers may have seen, would be this particular TTY. Um, as you can see, it's quite big. It has a very standard keyboard on it. It's set up exactly like a typewriter. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is for people obviously who cannot hear or unable to speak, they will rely a lot on what they can write with their hands, or use with their hands, and read with their eyes. So can we try it out and see how this works? I'd be happy to show you how it works. So for demonstration purposes, for instance, if I am the hearing impaired person and I use the TTY, how I would make a phone call is simply by using, by turning on my TTY equipment. In this particular instance, I'm also going to be using a standard phone in conjunction with the equipment. However, I can set up my equipment in such a way that I'm not going to need a TTY, uh, excuse me, a telephone equipment at all. But for this demonstration purpose, let's do that. So what I will do is I will pick up the receiver. I will put it on what we call the acoustic couplers and once that is placed all I need to do is dial 711 that will get me to the relay operator and what I need to do is give the relay operator the number of the person I wish to call so let's do that and what's going to happen is the relay operator will come on the line By tapping the key, I'm telling the relay operator that I, I would like to make a Didn't relay call. Okay. So I just instru instructed the operator to call uh, the 800 number. 
and the operator is responding back dialing 1-800-995-6831. Please hold. And that's just to let me know that the call is going through. It's letting me know it's ringing once. There's a recording that came on. Hold through the tones while your call is transferred. Sounds like TTY tones. So you are I are on the other end of the phone, holding the phone, talking to you, and you're typing in. Exactly, exactly. And Jubina on the other end is is talking on the phone, and this is why the delay is here. And the the operator is typing everything that Jobina is saying on the other end. We're here with Valerie talking about the relay service. They would like to know how the service um, benefits the community. Would you like to comment? So Jubina is a hearing person. She's talking, responding to the question, and whatever she responds to, the operator, as you can see, is typing her response, right. and I get to re read it off the screen. Right. The relay service is a great service because it links callers who may not have something Wise been able, otherwise been, otherwise able, been able to, to communicate. communicate. I know for me it is a great service because I am able to talk to my family members who are deaf. It's wonderful. When I don't have a TTY readily available. If I am using a cell phone, for example, I can call my mom to find out where she is. Wow. So what about secrets? over the relay service. Good Will anyone else know what we're talking about? So again, the delay is due to the fact that the operator is reading what I'm typing to Jobina, and when Jobina responds, there's her answer. Not at all. Is the ringing when the operator types an option? Can you turn it off or not? Yes, you can. Yeah, okay. Yes, you can. But it lets you know that you're still communicating, I Exactly. Suppose. They take the confidentiality agreement so that they do not pass any information that is learned between callers. Uh, Valerie is here in the studio just raving <laughs> about the service. And we want the world to know. I'm so glad to hear that. We want everyone to know that Relay 
is there for them. We just had a dentist come into our office who was deaf and needed his prince patients to use relay to call him. Oh, that's very considerate. So we gave him the information. That was a terrific example of the types of calls one can make uh, make via the relay service. Okay, Jobina. Thank you very much for spending a few minutes explaining how the service works. Um, goodbye for now. And on behalf of Valerie and the better part, thank you. Bye to SK. So that's how that works. Wonderful, thank you. My pleasure. Confidentiality and privacy are utmost in our minds whenever we provide the service. And in fact, since we started the service in the late 1980s, we have not had one breach of confidentiality. For the simple fact that it is a federal offense for any of the relay operators to divulge any information, not only are we not obligated to provide that information to anyone other than the two parties involved, we are prohibited by law to discuss that. What days and hours is the service available? 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days of the year. How does it get paid for? Very good question. Um, it's actually assessed on the uh, taxes that we have, on, that we pay on our phone bill. So if you're interested, the next time you would want to look at your phone bill, within the, um, the state tax, the federal tax, there is a line item in there that will read California Relay Service and Communication Devices Fund. So those few pennies is what funds the program. If I have an accident or I get injured, what about 911? How does that work? Very important question. Just like you as a quote unquote able-bodied person, if you were injured or if there was an emergency, you would pick up the phone and dial 911. Similarly, with a TTY machine, we will tell individuals, for those using a TTY equipment, they must dial 911 directly. They cannot access the relay service and have the relay operator dial 911 because there is no way for the emergency personnel to know where that call is coming from. So it's very important in case of an emergency and it's a TTY user that that person call 911 directly and not go through the relay service. Will the 911 know that it's a TTY that's connected? Most certainly, all 911 um, emergency personnel are aware of what a TTY call sounds like, and they're all equipped and trained to answer calls. The California Relay Service also offers a speech-to-speech -speech service. Can you tell us about this, and um, can we show our audience how it works? Certainly. Um, the speech-to-speech -speech service is yet another indispensable, I consider it an indispensable service, and it's primarily intended for use by individuals who, because of a very unique speaking pattern, it makes it challenging for them to be understood on the telephone. Um, good example, perhaps somebody who, um, if you know someone who might have cerebral palsy, mm -hmm. um, and it's quite difficult to understand them, or even people who have recently recovered from a stroke, um, and the enunciation is very difficult for them to do. So with the speech-to-speech -speech service, there are specially trained operators who will serve as communication assistants, mm -hmm. and they will help facilitate that call between the person with a speech impairment who wishes to make a phone call to another person. We're going to be speaking with Dr. Bob Siegelman, 
who founded the Speech to Speech Service in 1995. He works with the California Department of Rehabilitation. Dr. Bob has cerebral palsy and he speaks in a whisper. Could you connect me with Dr. Bob Siegelman, please? The person you are calling can hear but has a speech disability. The person will speak and I will revoice everything to you. When you hear the words go ahead, it's your turn to talk. Okay. You will speak directly to the person you are calling and say go ahead when you are ready for a response. Okay, thank you. Okay, please hold while I dial. Shall I say who's calling, madam? Uh, my name is Valerie Jeffrey. Dr. Siegelman. Dr. Siegelman. Oh, hello, Dr. Siegelman. A call for Dr. Siegelman from Valerie Jeffrey, California Speech to Speech, C6237. Okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Hello, Dr. Bob. This is Valerie Jeffrey of the Better Part TV program calling from Cupertino. How are you today? Go ahead. How are you today? I'm fine also, thank you. Did you get your telephone equipment free of charge from CTAP? May I ask what physical limitations you have? I was in a power wheelchair. I'm in a power wheelchair. Okay. My vocal cords. And my vocal cords. Don't function. Don't function. So I talk with a whisper. Which can be an advantage in some circumstances. I, I think some people. I think some people are more likely to listen. Are more likely to listen. To a whisper. To a whisper. Than to a loud voice. Than to a loud voice. gave me the idea for speech to speech. Because I used to use the TTY relay. And I can't type very fast. Because of cerebral palsy. So speech to speech. really makes communication much faster. And I'm trying to get the word out. That speech speech excuse me, that speech to speech exists. Because in the United States about five hundred people are currently using it. million people could benefit if they only knew about it. Go ahead. Who decided what equipment that you would need? Go ahead. One of the field advisors? Evelyn Hughes. Evelyn Hughes. We used to work together. We used to work together. On one of the committees. And she came out to my house. And helped me 
me evaluate. The speech-to-speech -speech service must be a very valuable lifeline to you. What would you say to encourage others to use this service? Go ahead. Okay, well, one more question. What do you like on your pizza? Go ahead. I'm a little strange. Because I like pepperoni. And pineapple. And pineapple. Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, it is strange, but uh, someday I'll join you for pizza. Thank you so much for taking my Bye. call. And giving our viewers the opportunity to be part of a speech to speech conversation. All the best to you. Goodbye. Good Goodbye. Bye -bye. Goodbye, Dr. Bob. Thank you, California Speech to Speech C6237. Goodbye. Okay, thank you, operator, very much. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Bye. What tips do you have for? hearing speaking people when using the CRS or STS services? Okay. Whenever they access the uh, relay service or the STS service, what we encourage them to do is talk to the person that they're speaking to directly. Forget that there's a third party involved. Um, again, that third party is only there to serve as a medium. They are not part of the conversation. So just like you and I were talking on the phone, I will talk to you directly and you respond to me directly. Similarly, over the relay service and the SDS service, talk to the person directly. Right. Can I find out about that in the brochures that you brought along, the California Relay Service brochure and the speech to speech yes. brochure? Yes. All of the, that information is actually on the informational packets. Yes. Do you hold any outreach events, um, such as community meetings, to let the public know what's available from CTAP? We are always available um, to do community presentations. And in fact, um, thank you very much for this medium, because this is one of the ways that we can bring the information to the community. But in terms of outreach itself, we try and conduct as many community outreach efforts as possible. Um, hospitals, conferences, um, even in nursing home facilities. We will go into those facilities and bring the equipment so that the consumers themselves get to see what are available. Can I just call the operator and say, could you connect me with the California Telephone Access Program? You most certainly can do that. Um, but just to uh, clarify, uh, when you say the operator, a lot of people may have the idea that by pressing O on their telephone, uh -huh. that that's the operator we're talking about. There's a very different operator actually involved. That's called the relay service operator. And how one can access the relay service operator is very simple. Dial 711 on your telephone. That's easy to remember. So we've got 911, <laughs> 411, and 711. If you would like to know more about the services discussed in this program or the products offered free of charge by the California Telephone Access Program, please call them at 
1-800-806-1191. For those with access to the internet, the address is www.ddtp.org. What's unique about the 800 number, Francis? Well, one of the best kudos we have received from the community is that we do not have a phone tree. Yay! We truly believe in the old-fashioned definition of customer service where you can actually talk to a real person. And in fact, um, I personally do test calls to our 800 number to just make sure that uh, the quality of the service is, is optimum. And every time I do access the 800 number, the most I have ever had to wait was three seconds. I've been talking with Outreach Specialist Francis Franco of the California Telephone Access Program about special phone services available to people with speech or hearing difficulties. Francis, thank you for being with us again. Thank you very much. I, we truly appreciate the opportunity and on behalf of the Public Utilities Commission, thank you for helping us spread the word to the community. And happy birthday, Francis. Oh, thank you. This is the best birthday present. So thank you, Valerie. Someone who has been part of our team is retiring from our crew after today's taping. And we want to take this opportunity to wish a fond farewell. Carter Wells has been our camera two operator for many years and we'll miss his smiling face in the studio. Carter, this program is dedicated to you. Thank you for your contribution to the better part. <laughs>